So the Baltimore Ravens, they finally had their long-awaited presser that featured one Lamar Jackson. Uh, and of course, the way that the Ravens normally do things, uh, on Monday after a game, uh, John Harbaugh, he'll have his presser. Tuesday is usually nothing, but normally it's Wednesday that the quarterbacks speak, that Lamar Jackson speaks. But this past Wednesday, coincidentally... They said that Lamar Jackson, he he left uh, practice. He left with a train a little bit early, so he couldn't speak to the media. Then Thursday came, and like, no, not yet. No, you're not speaking to the media. Then Friday rolled around. It's like, okay, he's speaking now. Uh, coincidence? I think not. Um, Ravens have had plenty of experience with bad PR. So I think this was just another case of them just really trying to protect themselves, them trying to protect Lamar Jackson, especially because the tweet obviously – it went crazy in headlines and ESPN and all this different stuff. And I think they just really wanted all that to sort of die down a bit before they actually had Lamar Jackson speak about it. So he did speak about it. And he said uh, after the game that he was mad uh, and that that tweet from that fan, that was the first thing he saw uh, and he reacted to it. Um, he said, my bad. And he said that he was just real bitter after the loss. I mean, you lose like that, and then you like you you put your team in a position to win, and then the de anyway. Um, he said that uh, he feels that that's how you should feel after a loss. You should be bitter after the loss. He said it shouldn't be all that happy and smiling and stuff like that. Um, but he said that the fans they should be upset too. <laughs> I'll tell you, Lamar, yeah, a lot of Ravens fans were upset after that one. But he said the fans, they shouldn't be upset at the players because we tried. And that's tough. That's, that's, that's really tough for fans not to be upset at players. I know fans are fans, players are players. We sitting here on our couches, in our chairs. Some of us may watch it on the floor. We may watch it standing up. However you watch the games is how you watch the games. But the players, they out there playing the game. Uh, so and, and, and it happens certain times there'll be certain plays when a player will make or will not make You'll be real happy or you'll be real sad and upset and whatnot and it's tough It's tough but anyway um, He said that uh, he asked he was asked why he deleted the tweet He was asked why he deleted it and like we always say and like y'all all know Once it's on the internet it's on there forever Especially somebody of his caliber somebody with his following and what not his popularity people are watching there, there there's so many people that are watching and waiting people already do all the watching and waiting with him enough on the field but just as many people they do the watching and waiting with him off the field too so he is human which you, you got to remember at the beginning and the end of the day so it makes it so tough it is such a tough position to be in when people just sitting there waiting for you. And, and it, when you say it out loud, it, it sounds really sad. It's such a tough position to be in when people are just sitting there waiting and watching for you to fail. They're waiting and watching for you to fail. There's some people that literally wake up every day, they sit there, they watch Lamar, and they're waiting for him to fail. Whether it's in a game, whether it's outside a game, and that's sad, that's a sad truth though. Because just a lot of people, they, they, they just, they wanna, they wanna be right about whatever preconceived thoughts they may have or whatnot, whatever assumptions and whatnot. Uh, but it's a sad truth. But so again, I I do commend him and, and his camp and his people for how they've been handling this for years. Cause I know it's so easy to get caught up in in a in a big mistake. Uh and when 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 he let his guard down for a second, it's so easy to get caught up in that. But that's also while a lot of people they get caught up in that, they also gotta commend how well they've handled it for the most part for years. Because he has obviously been dealing with this for years. Fans coming at him not just fans, but reporters and media and all that stuff. 24 set like literally every single day every single day so shout out to them for that um but anyway yeah he was asked why he deleted it and he said that it was actually his girlfriend that suggested uh, that he deleted because he might hurt somebody's feelings so he got rid of the tweet but again everybody has saw it already and if somebody didn't see it then there were enough screenshots on it already so everybody saw it already um so deleting it really didn't do anything um jameson hensley 
uh, he asked if Lamar had actually reached out to the fan at all about that. And Lamar said that he didn't reach out to the fan. Uh, but he said that he did see that that fan said that he loved him. Um, so Lamar said that uh, he loved him too. And see, something like this um, is tough because Lamar is somebody that uh, obviously when uh, enough of y'all have had experiences where you've seen Lamar somewhere and you greet him super nice, Super friendly. We we've gotten to meet Lamar a couple times, um, but especially the, the 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 last time that we met him, uh, it was a lot more just one on one because it was just me, uh, Carter, Lamar, and shout out to Lenny too. I appreciate you, Lenny. But anyway, um, and he's super nice, super nice, super friendly, super approachable. He ain't like some people be like, nah, 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 get away from me. And you can't fault people for being like that, especially famous people, because they have lives and they have such a lack of privacy already that when they do have some time to themselves, they may be out in the public or whatnot. They ain't going to want people all approaching him like that. But Lamar is somebody that will always say, hey, if you want to take a picture with him, if you, you're into autographs or whatever, whatever it may be. He's always somebody that's like, no, come here, come here, let's, let, let's do it. Um... So the fact that um, it, it's tough because when you're, very, when you're so accessible um, and people know you're accessible, there will be people that try to use that in a good way, in a positive way that you're accessible. Hey, let me reach out to Lamar. Hey, let me go say what's up if I see him in person or something like that. But then at the same time, there's people that will also use it in a negative way if they know that you're accessible because they will do things like this with the guy with the tweet and they will try to push your buttons they will try to get a reaction out of you they'll try to say this that and the third just to try to get a rise out of you and it's tough speaking from experience speaking from experience and there have been times when i stuff like this i've handled it the right way and there have been times where i've handled it the not so right way so I, I ain't saying nothing that i haven't experienced myself but obviously i haven't experienced it on the level of one lamar jackson so that, that's just a tough, tough position uh, to be in. Uh, but anyway, then there was another reporter, because I guess, I don't know if it was a Didi Kikabawa. I don't know if it was Cassie Calvert. I'm, I'm not sure who it was. Um, but there was another reporter. So I guess they, they may have saw how this was going. Because after Jameson's question, Jameson's like, oh, did, did you reach out to the guy? And it seemed like uh, Jameson was kind of being Jameson. He was reporting. But um, it seemed like, Whichever reporter it was, like I said, I don't know if it was a Didi, I don't know if it's Cassie, I don't know if it's somebody else, but she, it seemed like she recognized what the situation was and was like, hold up, we got to put a positive spin on this, we, we, we got to bring it back and we got to like just help Lamar in this situation. We got to help him out because we see how this conversation is continuing to go and let's, it's, it's going negative, but let's, let's, let's bring it more positive. So she asked, um, what do you take away from this experience and how you approach something like this moving forward? Um, and he said that he'll watch what he says, especially since their kids watching. And he says he doesn't want them to be saying that and that he may try and just stay off Twitter in that situation. But hopefully that they won't be in that situation anymore because that would mean that they weren't losing. So I, I did appreciate whoever that reporter was. Like I said, I, I'm not sure who it was, but I really appreciated the fact that they took the conversation in a different direction. Because it was about the negative, the negative, the negative, the negative. And that reporter was like, you know what? No, no, no. Let's let, let, let's change the direction that this thing is going. So that was really nice. Um, as far as the quad injury, he talked about that. He so he got a knee to his quad during the Jaguars game. Um, he was asked about all the clapping that he's been doing recently with like getting the snaps and stuff. And he said that's, that's something they, they got to work on, of course. Um, then he was also asked about uh, Stanford possibly being interested in Greg Roman. Um, and he said that he hadn't really heard about it. Um, <laughs> I think he heard about it. I think he just ain't want to say the wrong thing. But he said that he hadn't really heard about it. He said that 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 news probably came out around the time when he was trying to stay off Twitter. Uh, but anyway, that, that that was a nice little laugh uh, toward the end of his part of the press right there. But that's that. Uh, Harbaugh talked about how Marcus Williams is not playing this week. J.K. Dobbins is not playing this week. Neither one is a surprise. No, I don't think anybody should have expected either one to play this week. Uh, with J.K., again, I don't expect him for a little while. Um, again, they, they've been being extra careful with him. I expect that to continue. Uh, Marcus Williams, um, I would expect him back, especially because I don't think he got the, uh, the cast on anymore. So I would actually expect him back next week um, against 
if we play the Steelers next week, I think we play the Steelers next week. But I would, I would expect him back next week at the latest. I would expect him back the week after. But I, I think he'll be back next week. But that's that's just me. I ain't got no inside information. I'm like that's that's just my inclination. Um. So yeah. Anyway, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Use this as an example for yourself because at one point or another, we all gonna have people that just really hope that we fail hope that we slip up hope that we mess up people that try to get a rise out of us in all types of different situations but whenever you encounter people like that just know that there's that many more people there's that much more people that want to see you happy that want to see you have success and that are looking at you in a positive light i love y'all i appreciate y'all we out